This is another My View TV exclusive. Please remember to hit the notification bell, like, share, and subscribe. I don't bring nobody forward in your future for me. Everything what you see up my natural talent. Let me tell you something. You see, when you know what to please the audience with, it's simple me. What well, going people? Hope everybody in okay. Hope everybody in all right. A St. Andrew man is now facing robbery, aggravation, and illegal possession of firearm charges after he steal a cell phone from a cyclist in St. Catherine two weeks ago. This is how I did forget slap on me. I tell you, OMB. Report from the police that the accused 38-year-old Kevin wife pulled an imitation handgun and robbed the complainant on Mandela Highway on January 12th. According to the Dwayne Park Police, the complainant was riding his bicycle along the highway at about 8.45 p.m. when he was pounced upon by a white, a laborer of six miles who allegedly pulled an imitation handgun and robbed him of his cell phone before escaping in the area. The police were alerted and following a search of the area, white was accosted and the complainant's cell phone reportedly found in his pocket. An imitation firearm was also allegedly found in a small bag attached to his bicycle. The police said he was subsequently arrested and charged for the offense. His court date is being finalized. I slap on the slap on the Saboya. No one understand why me say all labor are supposed to get slapped with every single one of them. You understand them are eagle. Yes, gone are the days when one and two look man usually be labor and usually go past sight, go fling book and them thing there. Those days are no more. Anyway, my god, I'm going to St. Elizabeth now. They have a look update for Guna. Almost two months after the gruesome killing of school teacher in St. Elizabeth, police are yet to make a breakthrough in the case. Channel Street 28 was shot dead in broad daylight. Yeah, people. Broad, broad, broad daylight. Just outside the school gate of Sandy Bank Basic School, where she worked. The killing sent shockwaves through the school community. But commanding officer of the St. Elizabeth Police Superintendent Dwight Dale told our news team that investigation into Smith death are still ongoing. We are looking into it that our superintendent deal tell me shortly after the killing police name a man as a person of interest the man who turned himself over to the police a day after the killing was charged in connection with another murder in the parish he is said to be smith ex-boyfriend so the people them who that see him the police them only man said no 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 them charge him for our next killing he may really have to do that one day to refresh your people their memory for who don't remember what happened and who don't know what go on they are listening right now who don't know exactly what happened to smith police report that shot over 7 a.m on december 7 smith was walking toward the school entrance when two men who pretended to be working on a motorcycle nearby pulled an handgun approach her and open fire yes people who the deeper shot she get smith was shot several times all over her body the gunmen made their escape on the motorcycle smith was taken to the basket hospital dead 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 yes people dead body little fun carry down there but tell you nina people need a chance to defend themselves no matter what some people want say people need a chance to defend themselves but you have some people when them sit down on the decks yes when them need their affiliate and sit down on the decks them was one of them who decides say no 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 ordinary people don't forget gun criminal alone forget gun so now when they see them come out and attack tell them shut them out no, when you see them come out and attack, you understand? They are part of the problem. They could have helped solve this thing, but they never want to solve it, you understand? And now you see, you, Dennis Middles, you may attack now, you. You see, when they say them collect money under false pretense, me I beg you one favor, one favor and one favor only. You see, all of the money we usually get, just put in our little bag and cat bag will give them. Yeah, man, cat bag will give them, because you, see, be blame too. The common citizen, once you are a law abiding, once you fit the need, and that is where the FLA must establish clear criteria for need so that potential applicants can make informed application and don't waste their money. Because what the FLA is doing right now is, in my view, almost collecting money under false pretense. Because you ask me to apply, I don't know what the need, <laughs> uh, the criteria for need, but you deny me. On the, on, the, on the basis that no need established to be armed. And this is where I mean the crooks of the matter. The FL now has, now, has proven now to be inimical to the, in, the interests of the firearm industry. That includes dealers, trainers, range operators, you name it. The FL as it is now is basically has, has almost killed the, the industry. Nobody is no longer enthused to go to competitions anymore, right? Because we have, the FLA now is just almost overbearing, overreaching, right? And is not affording law-abiding citizens a fair chance 
of arming themselves in defense of their lives and property. One, in that, in, in that those amendments, establish in clear terms what defines fit and proper. Establish in clear terms what constitutes a need, right, whether by leg regulation or legislation. Also, in my view, the, the Prime Minister has now appoint, uh, created a new ministry, Ministry of um, Constitutional and Legal Affairs. Very timely. I think it's a perfect opportunity to address the whole issue of rights. When the other job you can dead, who do not come out, come, come talk. So it take me such in and miss chin for dead. For no fun to come out, come and talk now. I go at some man for going. People want to give me now go put my mouth and go and talk. If I do want now, my little man, they apply for this firearm, they drop out. You would see them come out and attack, but the Chinese community are pressure them now. You understand? That's why I say everybody around come talk. Heavy news media show this and I show that. So I'm going to forget to say what I said and I mean what I said. And you know me already. Me not take you back. Right over the ghetto, me gone to the police. Them I look for two nastiness and the people them know exactly which part them there. But me see if them not going to talk now, no. Brothers wanted for murder and shooting of your neighbor allegedly in full view of others has been elusive for close to two years and were recently listed as most wanted by the Portmore police. And the people them know who them be. So since you remember, let me tell you what I talk about. The St. Catherine South Police name on the weekend Marcus Mitchell and Marky Mitchell, otherwise called Poddy, both of Penway Drive Passage Fort amongst 10 wanted men in the division. The Mitchell brothers are wanted in connection with the murder of Jermaine Lichmore on March 25th, 2020, at his home on Passage Fort Drive. Yeah, let's get them service people business and leave it alone. Let me tell you exactly what happened right now. Our news team understand that Lichmore who operate a car wash had intervened in a family dispute involving the brothers and one of their cousins when he was shot dead. That's why me and Les tell family business and walk far from it. Even the mission remain on the run, the main witness in Lichmore's killing, his mother, 58-year-old Joan Stone, was also murdered 20 months later at the same Passage Forge home on November 18, 2021. Stone became disabled after she was reportedly struck by a bullet in her leg at the time her son was killed at their gateway. The wanted brothers were the targeted family's immediate neighbors for several years. Can't believe when I live so close and almost family, you know. Stone, according to relative, would often be engaged in outbursts about Lichmore's fatal incident over a neighbor's premises, saying, I wanna do it, I wanna do it. You picked me, them killed me, picked me, and shot me, and me can't walk. Yes, people should say that. Remember them all lesser people who make wallet and nice and know the truth, them get rid of them. Look how them get rid of Stone now. Reported that Stone was killed when a gunman posed on a customer, entered a yard and ordered a cigarette and shot her in front of at least two children. Let me tell you something still, people. I'm be honest with you. I'm going to be honest with you. Nobody can kill my family members. Yes, I mean, what's your own? And four family members live next to me. No, 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 no. On the life of an easy, too. On the life of an easy. I'm be honest with you. Me not pack and live still. But, 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 me a angle my bangle before me leave. You understand, people, me talk it as it is. And as it might be, that bad face like me, friend, forget my hand dirty to no, 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 no. And if you feel like say me never gonna say that this morning, you make a sad mistake. The police reported that warned Stone that based on their intelligence, she would become a target. She had reported received information that she would be killed inside her home. Before her death, on at least two occasions, shot her report in the fire in the direction while she stand at the front of her yard. Let me tell you something. Seven brothers, seven different men. I me always tell you now enough you agree with me. But me, I'm going to be honest with you now. You know, say pity them kill my pity. I own over the salive scratch free. No, no, no. It not going to work. It not going to work. And as I said, people, he rent out my place. You understand me? We rent out my place and leave. But one thing me sure about. Who do not go there now? Oh no, no, go there, no, go join my picnic. Oh no, I go join my picnic until me can find food to pick for your ass down a bit together. You understand? Oh no, no, so the picnic a criminal long, 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 long time. People me talk as it is and as it might be. So I don't want to not feel like, say, we are walk off about ya. We no not feel like we are self to. And I'm speaking of that, we we'll go to the Clansman trial update. One thing me know about the police, them in this trial, yeah. the man them have foolishness, lack. Chief Justice Brian Sykes was earlier today taken aback by the fact that neither the police nor the prosecution in the Wandon Klansman gang trial had images of a crime scene that was processed in 2017. The incident relates to the murder of a man allegedly carried out by members of the gang, but there's seemingly no forensic evidence from the police to admit to the court's records. 
The murder in question is that of a man identified as Domain Foster in August 2017 on Red Hills Road in St. Andrew. Two civilian witnesses have so far given evidence relating to the murder and now the forensic crime scene investigator has been called to the stand. But much to the Chief Justice's surprise, there is no physical evidence of the crime scene. The forensic photographer was in the process of detailing how she processed the scene, but Chief Justice Brian Sykes intervened, asking, where are the pictures? The police witness could not account for the pictures she took, saying after they were downloaded, something went wrong with the hard drive, and the compact disc with the images was given to an officer with the statement, who then signed for it. However, that book has seemingly disappeared, and the witness did not remember the officer's name. Chief Justice Sykes remarked, quote, This is not looking good in the 21st century, end quote. This while asking, what if there were unsolved cases, and the pictures would be necessary to the matter, or even to exonerate someone? The witness further stated that spent casings were collected from the scene as well as a blood sample. Meanwhile, another police witness detailed how he was in the Spanish Town bus park in February of 2018 when a bus driver, who was a victim of extortion, was shot and killed just meters away. The driver, known to the officer as Tandy Bay, plied the route from Spanish Town to Maypen. Additionally, the prosecution says that the Communication, Forensic and Cybercrime Division, CFCD, is currently in the process of combing through the call data records of conversation between members of the gang. It is expected that the call data records will be made available to the court by the end of this week.